Hello again. So in this video, which is going to be the final video in the series that I'm doing on how to analyze an investment property, um, I'm going to show you how to insert a spread, a, um, a dashboard that will allow you to manipulate the individual variables for income and expenses and immediately see the impact on your return on investment. So you'll notice now a couple of things. First of all, I cleaned the spreadsheet up just a little bit since the last video. And here's what I've done. Uh, aside from a little bit of color, you'll notice that it starts on row 11. And there's something above, which is what I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you how it interacts with the rest of the spreadsheet. But for the starting point for today, I wanted to have a little bit of simplicity. And so what I've done is I've tied all of your revenue and expense variable projections to one single growth rate variable. Now the growth rate variable is 1.05, which means that we're going to be making a 5% year over year increase in revenue and expenses. So as you will this is not a realistic prediction because uh, realistically most of your items will vary a little bit and it won't be realistic to predict 5% year over year without any changes and across all your revenue and expense items. So um, what I've done is I've, I've made this variable, which is one that we're going to insert, something that all of the others are dependent upon. So the tax growth rate variable is tied, and you'll notice the field plus B5. It's, it's tied directly to the growth rate variable. The insurance growth rate variable is tied to the same, actually is tied to the, the tax rate variable. So all of the variables in the expense section are tied to the tax rate variable, which is tied to the growth rate variable. So all I have to do is insert one variable and everything on the spreadsheet changes. Now, um, the year one variable for tax growth rate is tied to the tax rate variable. So is each one of the variables for all of the years. Okay, so everything is currently tied to the uh, to the tax rate variable, which is tied to the growth rate variable. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the spreadsheet um, by clicking Format and Auto Fit Row Height. And you'll see that the spreadsheet now has a new section inserted above it. The new section insured, inserted above it allows you to plug in variables for important things like property price. Now I'm presuming that whatever your property price is, you're going to put 25% down because the bank is, or the whoever your lender is, is going to require as a commercial investment that you have 25% down. That's pretty normal. And then I'm going to, I have a variable for additional capital investment. And uh, these two variables here, the 25% down and the additional capital investment, become your total capital investment. 25% of the property plus whatever additional capital you want to have for uh, things like value-add repairs and or just uh, extra cash in case you need it for some unanticipated cash need that you, that you have come up. Okay, the cap rate multiplier is actually a uh, calculation uh, which you probably would already know if you're buying the property, but it's, uh, it's a calculation of the purchase price of the property divided by the net operating income at the, of the property at the time of purchase. Okay, so that's that. Now, you'll notice that this row has, is, you can't read everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to format additional column width. And you'll see that we have some, you know, some uh, data here that I, 
is wider than the row would normally need to be for the section uh, the section below. So it, it distorts the column width a little bit, but you have some, some important information here. So we have a baseline growth rate, and you'll notice that if I change this to say 1.06, all of the variables down below, I'll just go ahead and hit enter, they change to 1.06. Now the vacancy rate doesn't change because it's not a growth rate, it's a static variable for a vacancy rate. But if I go down here, you'll see that all of the variables are now 1.06 as we go out. So I'm going to keep it at 1.05 for the moment. Now the number of units and the monthly unit uh, rate times 12 is your annual gross rental income. I have a vacancy rate, and this shows the net annual rents, which is your total gross rents min um, minus your vacancy, which would leave you with 2,550,000. Now, the data that we used for the example in, this, in the video on expenses showed property taxes of 350,000, 119 for insurance, 113987 for management fees. So I'm going to come down to this lower section and scroll down. Here is your taxes line. Here's the 350000 If I change this to 450000 and hit insert, you'll see that that changes for our baseline year, and then every year after that is increased by a progressive, one point, by a progressive 5%. Almost all properties will have property taxes, insurance, and management fees. And in many cases, for smaller investments like single-family houses and you know, duplexes, you may not have a repair and maintenance cost anticipated, utilities, leasing and advertising expenses, contractor fees, payroll, admin, and others. So what I did is I just put an other category here which you may or may not have, but for the purpose of this spreadsheet, I have the other, other category. If these things are all zeroed out, then you'll want to just simply zero them out and then put a dollar amount in miscellaneous for other, and that'll simplify your spreadsheet significantly. Now, what this does is automatically calculate in this yellow box your predicted return on investment in five years when the property is sold in five years and your predicted return in eight years when the property is sold in eight years. Now, at the moment, these returns don't look particularly attractive. And the reason is really pretty simple because everything is very standardized and um, we need to go in and look at each, each line item separately. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to growth rate. So a standard 5% growth rate is not currently realistic in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. Realistically, this next year, depending upon where the property is, you certainly could easily get a 15% and you might be able to get a 20% growth rate. So if we presume that you're going to go into a good market Take a property and improve it. In today's, today's market in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and in many other markets, there's such, there's such a shortage of housing, and housing is so expensive because of the interest rates. I'm going to say that for the next year, you could probably get a 20% increase. So I'm just going to plug in for year number one a 20% increase, 1.2. I'm going to plug in 15% increase the year after, 10% the year after, and now I'm going to leave it at 5% going out further. Now, I don't know why we have a dark field here. There we go. I don't know what happened. Something happened. This changes our return on investment significantly in a five-year to eight-year time frame. So all I really did for these is... I left the spreadsheet, all of the analytics for the spreadsheet in place, and I went down and I captured the return on investment information, which was on my last field. And this is a return on investment calculation for 
all of the different impacts for the for the cash flow and for the sale of the property. So in each one of these years, I presume that the property is sold for whatever is the current multiplier, the net in, net operating income multiplier, based upon what the net operating income is for that year, along with positive cash flow for the year, net operating income. So um, it, that's what this this dollar amount or this multiplier or the return on investment is here. So now we can come back up and we can say, well, um, maybe that's a little too aggressive for us to be confident. So let's give 10% for the first two years and maybe also for the third year. So that changes the return on investment uh, from to 1.8 at the end of five years, basically almost doubling your money and almost tripling your money, 2.7 at the end of eight years. So now you can play around with individual variables. Let's go down and look at your taxes. Let's say that you're comfortable with the taxes going up and your insurance going up and your management fees all going up by the same 5%. But let's go down and look at a particular line item, which is contractor services. Here we have $175,000 in contractor services. If we presume $175,000 in contractor services, in other words, the same as before, that's going to reduce our, um, our, our return on investment pretty noticeably. But if we actually think that we can, by improving the property, reduce the contractor services that we're going to need in the future, uh, we might come in and um, and adjust the the you know this number, and it's going to you can see what playing with the different expense items are going to do to your return on investment. So you might decide that your leasing and advertising expense likewise is going to be much lower because you're going to have such a beautiful property that it's going to um, convert a higher number of um, visitors into tenants when they come by. So you might decide that you're going to drop this number to 25000 Okay, so... 46,000 was the pre-purchase number. You're going to be more efficient and effective. Now, utilities, we have them going up at 5%, but let's say that utilities go up at 10% for a couple of years and then come back to a more normalized 5%. Okay, so you can, again, you can start playing around and you can see what the impact automatically is. Let's say that your administrative costs, your payroll costs, your employee costs are going to be less than 250000 so you put in 175. If we made it the same as the previous year and we grew out from there, 1.57. But if we make that number 175000 you see that it impacts. If we, are, if we actually don't have an administrative cost, we could zero that out. And you'll see that the what the impact is automatically. So what I wanted to show you is how you can create a little dashboard. And you're just setting a, um, a frame view at um, below, below line 11. And then if you keep your cursor down here in the lower section as you scroll down, you can play with the individual variables and the growth rates and you can see what the likely return on investment impact is going to be. So this is a very useful tool and I wanted to show you how that works. So if you have any questions, I would love to invite you to go to the domain the multifamilyinvestorclub.com. And so I'm going to show you where that is. I'm going to find a browser here.
so um, actually I need to I wonder if that browser is showing up inside of the um, inside of the yeah there it is okay so I'm gonna make this a little smaller come on become smaller here we go so I'm gonna put it inside the window here so you can see and I'm going to go to multifamilyinvestorclub.com. We'll take you to um, a, a new page that I've set up. And the um, important thing I want you to know is that there's a community that you can join. If you come and you click on the Join My Community link, either this button right here, or this button on the left hand side that says join our community I will automatically send you a copy of the spreadsheet that you can just use you can edit it any way that you want to um, and you will also get the side benefit in the community of being able and I'm still building this out but of being able to network with other investors uh, real estate investors real estate property syndicators and um, just basically be able to search a database if you're looking to to find syndicated properties that you can invest in I'll have those available for you and if you're looking for um, accredited investors that are potential investors in your property I'll have those as well that you can look for so uh, please go there and uh, click on the join my community button and create an account and I will automatically send you the spreadsheet so that you have uh, you have all of this uh, yourself that you can work with directly all right thanks for watching i will see you on the next video bye